ladies and gentlemen welcome back to my channel we are today tuesday february 9th oh, 19 february 5th 2019 and thank you so much for everyone who has subscribed to the channel and thank you so much for those of you who are tuning in so for today we are going to talk about diaspora the haitian diaspora <laughs> I'm already anticipating the comment underneath this video. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. So, um, we're not going. We have a lot to discuss. I have about two pages and a half. So, let's get right into it. So, let's talk about the Haitian diaspora. Now, the first group, we're going to analyze the different groups. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about them. Um, so, let's talk about the first group. The first group of diaspora, I said, these are those who were born outside of Haiti to Haitian parents. So these are the people that are born considerably like myself, you know, people who were born, born outside of Haiti, but your parents are Haitians. So I said that this first group of um, the Haitian diaspora, their parents taught them of their Haitian inheritance. So they are people who are like at home, the Haitian culture is prevalent. Like, they are absolutely not, you know, they, they, even when they are born outside of Haiti, their parents have, you know, indulged into them that sense of pride, you know, but they, it's not only that a lot of times these kids, they like, they speak Creole better than myself. Like they, they can talk Creole. They know about like traditional Haitian food. They can eat it. They will, they like, these are like Timuna Isien. So, I said that um, their parents, they speak Creole, um, they vacation regularly in Haiti, they are very interested in investing in Haiti, but they just don't know how. So this is what I'm talking about, that first group. So my, myself, I don't consider myself a diaspora, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm totally Asian. So, but you find people who might just be like, I have a lot of friends that I've made acquaintances here in Haiti, and you, like, if you take these kids and you take myself, you know, these kids are more Haitian than I am. Because even if I grew up in Haiti, like, that raw Haitian, as far as, like, going outside of the country, outside of, like, doing all these things, you know, that raw Haitian, I haven't had it. Excuse me. Again, as I said to you, these are kids that are, you know, the only thing is that they, they are really in tune with their Haitian nationality, their Haitian inheritance, their vacation in Haiti. And they are, they love Haiti. They would want to come back to Haiti. They would want, and when I say kids, it could be that you are way into your forties. Like people who come to Haiti on a regular, it's like they're always in Haiti. And if the opportunity presented themselves, they would be the first to come to Haiti. They would be the first to invest in Haiti. So I said that there are, um, the second group of the Haitian diaspora. I said the second group, I identify them as such. Okay. Their parents didn't teach them of Haiti. So their parents just never taught them of Haiti. They are somewhat interested for pleasure or opportunity purpose. So these are kids that their parents have not really tell them anything about Haiti. Yes, they would want to come to Haiti probably for pleasure or not if, you know, opportunities. They said, I said, wouldn't invest in this present Haiti. So these type of diaspora, these are people who are probably like, more either americanized like they're more into a different culture the culture that they grew up in they're more into that culture so for them they don't have a mind a patriotic mindset like a all oh, haiti mindset like they probably have a mindset of yes i would invest in haiti but not the haiti like girl what what just no 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 they're not about that life so i said they probably don't speak the language they more than likely don't identify as haitian as well they don't really relate to the Haitian culture, but would gladly enjoy a piece of the pie. So like I said, these are probably opportunistic, opportunistic people. So these, these are, are kids who, it's kind of like, they don't really identify as, like I literally have known people like that. These are the kids sometimes who come and who works at the US Embassy here or here in Haiti. They work like very like either like 
government position job like they're using their di their dual card so they know they are haitian by birth maybe sometimes these kids are kids that are actually born in haiti but just because you're born in haiti but let's say you left haiti when you were like between the ages of two and six so these are like your tender years so between that age you're not going to remember too much of haiti so these are kids that it's kind of like they're looking at Haiti more like of an opportunistic, opportunistic type of thing to come to Haiti. It's kind of like, oh, you know what? I can come to Haiti and say that I've come to Haiti. You know, they're seeing the opportunities in that. Okay. So I said the second group. These are, these are, those are born on the Haitian soil, but they are living out elsewhere. So those are the second group. So we're going to identify the second group of diaspora of people who were born in Haiti, but they were raised elsewhere. So the first group I talked about. I said the first group is their umbilical cord is tied in with Haiti, okay? They find every opportunity to remind you that they are from Haiti. You know them, you know them. These zo sac passe. It's kind of like these kids or these people, they don't give a damn. You know, they just are Haitians. You know, they're going to rep Haiti or rep, you know, they're going to rep Haiti wherever they are. You're going to know. You're going to get tired of, I sometimes get tired of them. I do. I, <laughs> I do. I sometimes get tired of them. Like, if I hear one more word from your mouth about Haiti, if, if I hear one more mouth, one more word. So I said they are constantly investing in their Haitian communities abroad. So these are the kids sometimes who like they are like you'll be surprised like they are doing grassroots movement out of Haiti. Like they are like into the whole Haiti community. You know, they're participating in stuff in their churches. Like you couldn't tell them anything about Haiti because they are like that nationalist. It's inside of them. So I said they have businesses in both their country of resident and in Haiti. A lot of times these people is like they have businesses and you know their countries of residence, but they also have businesses here in Haiti. I said these are the true ride or die. They are more Haitians than the Haitians are living in Haiti. They always ready to fight anyone who says the slightest thing about Haiti. They are very patriotic and if given the opportunity will contribute to the development of Haiti. So, yes. So, to me, I find that if Haiti were to, even if Haiti were structured like at 60%, these people at themselves, they would make Haiti run. Like, you know how you make something run? Like, if you go on a ride and the ride starts to go down and the ride just jumps. So, this would be this type of people, you know? So, because it's kind of like they are already invested. They have both their feet in Haiti. They also have both their feet in a different country. Like, you couldn't tell them anything related to Haiti. They are all about that life. So, I find that these people truly and sincerely, like, um... If given the opportunities at themselves, they have enough strength and power to make serious changes in the economic development of our country. So let's talk about the second group of the same. So these the Haitians that are born in Haiti, but that are raised outside of Haiti. So now we, we already identified the first group. So now we're going to identify the second groups. <laughs> Yeah, listen guys, this, these are probably going to be the group that are going to talk shit. So let's say hi to them. Let's, let, let's say hi to them. So I said these people, they hate Haiti. Like, they hate Haiti. They probably suffered some trauma in the country. Yes. A lot of times I find that when I meet someone and through a third or fourth party, I... um get to know the person and the, they tell me that that person is Haitian, like such a, like I would have, let's say that the person speaks, since this is where I live in the US, let's say that that would be a person who is totally fluent in the language of the country where they, they reside, like they're into that, like if they were not, if they never told you that they, hate, they're, they were Haitian, Shen, you would have never like um, known that. They don't want to have anything to do with Haiti, they don't want to talk about Haiti, they are, these are the people who have kids and it's kind of like they don't, they are not interested. I find that when you research, if you do your research on these people, a lot of times these people suffered some type of trauma in Haiti. A lot of times they suffered because it's like you're not going to hate your country like that. 
there is something behind it. So it may just be that that person suffered a harsh trauma in their country. So I said, they are very, so I said, they avoid anything or anyone associated with Haiti. These other people, it's kind of like they do not participate or anything that are Haitians out of their country. Like they don't. If you're Haitian, they, if, if let's say that they get to know you and they like you and they find out that you are Haitian, they will stop talking to you. They don't want to have anything to do with the Haitian. They don't care. They don't want to have anything to do with Haitian people. I said that they are very bitter, envious, and angry. A lot of times these people are people who would probably have loved to come back to Haiti, but because of their bitterness, because of the fact that they hate Haiti, they know for a fact that they would have not been able to prosper in Haiti. So they look at people like myself who are here in Haiti, who are doing so much in Haiti, and it's kind of like, you know, they, they're not getting inspired like someone from myself. They're most, more than likely, they are getting like envious. They are getting bitter when they're looking at a bel cri or a cancum, like for my Isien cancum. <laughs> because a lot of times these people, it's like, all jokes aside, a lot of times it's like these people, they suffer trauma. So they, they don't, they never have, they never dealt with the trauma that they suffered. And somewhere deep inside, because I feel like with Haitian people, like you do have such a connection with Haiti. So it's kind of like somewhere deep inside, they would love to come to Haiti. They would want to do something, but they just buried that. And they turned all these emotions in, into hatred emotions. So now it's kind of like, you know, they, they feel bitter. You know what I mean? So I said they, they are, are very happy. They are very unhappy despite portraying something else. So these are the people probably like in the country and their countries of residence. They are set like they are part of the middle to like, you know, upper class. Some of these Haitian people, it's kind of like they listen, they are rolling on top. You know them, you know, they are part of like the upper class. But deep down, they are not happy because they still miss Haiti. They still would want to come back to Haiti. If given the right opportunity, they would want to invest in Haiti. But they just never dealt with whatever made them hate Haiti. And like I said, nine times out of ten, these people suffered a traumatic experience. So I said they often reminisce of their lives in Haiti. I mean, if you have, even if you're not Haitian, if you ever live in a community where there are, or you work with a lot of Haitian people, you know these people, they always tell you about like, oh, in my days, you know, like, this is how I used to be. Like, in my days, like, these people always find a way to reminisce about their past. So I said, they secretly envy others who have the freedom to go to come and go in Haiti. So not only for trauma, but let's say that these people probably dealt into politics and they know that one way or another, they wouldn't be able to come back to Haiti. They secretly, like, let's not forget, like, they don't want you to know that they are Haitian. Like, they're trying to say, like, ah, I see, like, ugh, but like, ugh, Haiti, ugh, Haiti, ugh, Haiti. <laughs> but they envy people who want to be like, who want to be, I mean, Portland is a little crazy, but who wouldn't want to be in the sunshine, have the luxury to, it's such a different life, okay? So I said, they refuse to speak Creole. Oh my God, they pretend not to understand Creole. These are the people who, like, they probably know Creole, but if you try to talk to them, they'll be like, oh, but I don't understand that. I don't understand. Like, these are probably also the people who say things like, oh, do you speak Haitians? Like, these are probably these type of individual, you know, like they want to disassociate so much with their Haitian culture that they end up looking a fool. So I said they don't want to associate with anything Haitian. They don't, don't bother them. Like, don't try to change these people. Like I said, these are people who, for one way or another, have suffered something. And don't try to, like, don't try. It's, there's something in their mind. There's something that happened in Haiti. There is something that happened. So they witness something, and they detach from that culture. So, and sometimes you meet even, it, it doesn't even have to be, like I said, these are people who are born in Haiti. And sometimes you can meet older people, like, who are like that. They speak with a heavy accent. I'm talking about they speak with such a heavy accent. It's like, ah, okay, like, I really know that you, like, I know that you speak real, but they don't want to talk about it. Like, they don't want to talk real. Like, don't try to bother them. And I said, you would absolutely never know 
that these people are from Haiti, from Haiti. Again, like I said, these are the people that if you don't know, if they don't either tell you this or if either they don't tell you this or they, you don't know someone who know them, you just never going to find out that these people are, are from Haiti. And for people who always like write to me, because I find that on, and to conclude our topic discussion, you know, let me know who do you associate with. I would love to know, like, from the Haitian people who watch, like, who do you associate with? And also for those of you who are, like, your parents are from Haiti. And this, the, I put this video out especially for, like, my younger viewers who are, who have their parents from Haiti, but they're suffering because their parents are not wanting them to go to Haiti. So <clears throat> try to identify yourself or your family through this type the different groups and you might just understand why these people are the way that they are okay ladies and gentlemen this is it for the topic discussion of the day for some reason like I, i'm not like my nose is a little stuffy like i feel like right here it's kind of like i can't really breathe and um like i said to you the it's it has the weather has changed so it's it's not so hot where it's like unbearable but it's hotter than it was like in january okay guys this is it for my topic discussions of the day i hope you will learn something from it and i look forward to your commentaries i will see you in the next thank you so much for watching